Chapter 3. When Jean-Noël was a child, his natural curiosity, as expressed to his mother regarding the identity of his father, was at first met, not unlike Siddhartha Gupta's before him, with vagaries bordering on disdain. At one point, however, Natalie was forced to admit, if only to herself, that Jean-Noël's curiosity could not be sloughed off as idle and that the child indeed deserved to be given some inkling of an idea as to who his father actually was. And so it was, just before Jean Noël's departure for boarding school in Paris at the tender age of six, that Lally had at last found the courage to speak the truth to the child about his father, or at least some semblance thereof. I didn't really know your father, all that well, Natalie had begun tentatively as she and Jean Noël shared a basket of french fries, sprinkled generously with celery salt, and sat around the outdoor circular fireplace in the patio of the Brentwood Mart, Country Mart, one typically overcast day in June. And I was prevented from ever getting to know him better because, and here Natalie took at what Jean Noël could only have considered to be the worst possible moment, a pause. Oblivious to the clearly posted signs that hung about the patio, advising patrons not to feed the birds, Natalie had chosen that precise moment at which to fling a french fry under the bench upon which she sat to a rock dove who had been milling about around her feet. No sooner had she done this, however, than a few more rock doves spontaneously appeared and to him she obligatorily flung a few more french fries. If Natalie was using the birds as a convenient distraction from the subject at hand, she quickly forced herself to refocus for Jean Noël's sake, as the boy was clearly hanging on her every word. Because, she reiterated, picking up where she had left off and clearing her throat in an effort to buy just a little more time before taking the plunge and saying as nonchalantly as possible, he was swept out to sea. An ominous silence hung in the air between them as Jean Noël wrestled with this patently bizarre pronouncement so perfunctorily made. At long last, he asked simply and with a blank expression, how? Oh, his mother replied as offhandedly as she could. That kind of thing just happens up there a lot. Jean Noël, Noël understood up there to be in both magical and treacherous place, known as Big Sur, where he had been born. Are you sure? The child queried in honest disbelief. Was he swimming or something? He suggested helpfully, unable as he could <clears throat> unable as he was to understand how such an event could occur. No, Natalie informed her son. The water's too cold up there for that. He was walking his dog on the beach, that's all. In her own attempts at being helpful, Natalie had only added to Jean Noël's consternation. Then how? the child demanded once more in earnest. In Bixter, the ocean has this weird way of sneaking up on you. Then it knocks you off your feet, sucks you into the sea, and never gives you back. Natalie said this quite matter-of-factly as she strove for a practical way to explain his father's tragic demise. I don't believe you, Jean Noël replied, almost grinning, so sure he'd been that his mother was only kidding. Many people don't believe it. And that's why it happens every year to so many of them. There are even lots of warning signs posted on the beaches, but people don't often pay attention to signs, do they? Natalie said this, shaking her head in disparagement even as she surreptitiously flung another french fry to the rock dove, still waiting patiently beneath her seat. But what happened to the dog? Jean Noël demanded suddenly and with urgent concern. Wow, fortunately, he was a Newfoundland. In other words, a strong swimmer 
and not afraid of cold water. He managed to survive and to actually save another poor soul who might have drowned that day. Sadly, however, he could not save your father too. Soberly, Natalie let it be known. A number of moments passed before Jean Noel then put forth his next important question. And what was his name? Whose? Natalie asked back feebly, feeling a tightening in her throat. The dogs! Jean Noel cried out in the utter exasperation of a six year old at his mother's sometimes abject inability to grasp the obvious. Oh, of course! Natalie responded with mock sheepishness, relieved as she was that the child had not meant his father's name. Byron, she then went on to say. Lord Byron, actually, she added with deep affection as she reached out to stroke her son's own shaggy head. <laughs>